I really like it. I like the I like the interface of it. I like the touch screen and the smart device type of um, you know functionality of it. It's much better than some of the other pumps out there, I feel like. And I think that once the nurses get used to it, they really like it. It's just easier to use. I mean, I think troubleshooting's easier because everything's right on the screen. You don't have to kind of try and figure out what's going on with it. I just think the Sapphire device is just very user-friendly. Um, and we've been using it now since, I think 2015 is when we implemented it. So pretty much in the beginning, I don't know when it was released in the US market, but pretty, pretty soon thereafter. It's an easy pump to use. I mean, once you know it, it's really easy. Not always. I have some champions and I've had uh, some success in training some people to be, you know, trainers of the pump at the organization. Um, a lot of time they could be like an on-call nurse or like you said, a contracted or just a per diem nurse that's coming out to troubleshoot a pump and they have no idea on what to do. And that's why we offer the 24 hours, seven days a week on-call service because there's no way we could do it without that. So we provide that support to our nurses. I mean, I don't, I'm not familiar with the way that, you know, Oso Pharmacy is another local pharmacy um, that provides hospice services, but because it's sterile compounding, there's not a lot of pharmacies that do that. Um, and we have kind of created our own niche in hospice, so we kind of try and do an all-inclusive. We're not only providing the infusion, but we're doing the oral drugs, and we do non-sterile compounds too, so that's kind of why they come to us, because we can provide everything for the hospice patient. So pre-COVID, what we used to do is go out to the different facilities you know, there's nursing agencies and do live presentations. I take a pump with me and spend about an hour with the nurses, bring some pumps out there so they could play with them as well. Um, but the, I think the problem is, is that those nurses that were being trained weren't using the pump every day. So it might be six months until they see that pump again. So, you know, there's, there's that uh, loss of information between that, those two time points. Um, what we have created is the YouTube videos, and I think that you've seen those on our website, that nurses can go back and refresh themselves prior to going out to see a patient, which I think is really helpful. Um, if they're just changing a bag, what do they do? So they can go see that two minute video and they can you know, get a refresher and then go out and, and do that. Depends on the therapy. So I would say since where we do a lot of PCA or pain management, um, a lot of it's reported from the nurse. So we don't, we rarely are in direct contact with the patient. So it's all, you know, secondhand from the hospice nurse or the physician. Um, in terms of, you know, monitoring pain, we're looking at the number of boluses the patients are using and then reevaluating if their rates need to be changed, um, monitoring signs and symptoms of pain too. Um, for other, Treatments such as antibiotics, we're looking at labs just to figure out, you know, if the uh, therapy is appropriate for each patient and then making modifications if we need to. The only time I look at the event log if there's a complaint. So if the nurse says if she thinks there's an issue with delivery history or tampering or whatever it may be, I'll go back through the event log. So if I could find a way to gather that data and, you know, just have it available, that would be uh, very helpful. Well, it is a burden because it's very timely. I mean, I could have to go, you can imagine every alarm that goes off in a 24-hour period, it might be hundreds of, you know, different bolus pushed, bolus not delivered, or, or whatever it may be. That Each line, you know, it's, it's very time-consuming. So that, that is troublesome, um, but I don't do it very often. So I think, you know, I, I suppose if, the, if it could come directly to us in some way without having to download it. So if there was a way we could 
you know, see what was happening on the pump in the pharmacy live time, that would be very helpful. I do. <laughs> I am a one-man show, if you, if you didn't know that already. Um, I have a very good infusion tech, but he is very limited in what he wants to get involved with. Um, so all the PMs I do, uh, the fast test I've been doing now since, you know, past, I guess, six months, because I, what I try and do is split. We have 29 pumps. I try and split it up into two batches, so half of them get it in June, half of them get it in December, and I just rotate it through that way. I love it. Um, I question it because it's so much quicker. Is it really measuring everything we need it to measure? But I think that because it's so much faster, I may utilize it more. And, and the reason is, is because our pumps get turned over so fast. I mean, we may have a pump out you know, for a day or for three days. And I, when it comes back, I wanna make sure that it's still where, it, you know, delivering what it should be delivering. Correct, yeah. I, I, yeah, it, it would, might be very timely, but I would definitely increase the frequency to maybe every six months or something like that instead of every year. My tech tracks the pumps for me, so that's his job to, you know, once patient passes or is discharged, they, he will retrieve those pumps. And that's very difficult too. So retrieving a pump, that is, leads me into another um, area if we had some kind of tracking device on those pumps. And I know that our owner has thought about that, about putting some kind of a GPS on the pump. Um, it's kind of been discussed and then dismissed, I think, due to the expense. But we have had lost pumps over the course. We've probably had at least a dozen pumps that we've lost or, yeah, um, hospice is responsible for the loss of those pumps. We've even had a pump that was never removed from a patient and was um, incinerated when he was cremated. I think in today's day and age, we don't need to use batteries if we can recharge them. You know, it just, they, it's, just, it's just a learning thing that they need to get used to doing.